Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here, uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down the NBA slate on DraftKings for uh, Thursday, April the 20th. We do have another three-game slate for Thursday night. Uh, we got Game 3 of the Sixers and Nets series, we got Game 3 of the Kings and Warriors series, and we got Game 3 of the Suns and Clippers series. So, uh, three-game slate, we're going to talk through each one of these three games, give you guys kind of my early thoughts on this slate, what I do like, taking a first look. On, uh, on Wednesday night when I'm recording this video. But um, as always, guys, before we do get started with the breakdown, if you guys do enjoy these DFS videos, and if they do uh, help you out, make sure you hit that like button down below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And if you guys are new to the channel, if you have never checked out Price Picks before, uh, Price Picks is the sponsor of this video. You guys can sign up for Price Picks, and you can use my promo code, promo code NOAH, when you sign up. If you look at the bottom of the screen, uh, when you sign up for Price Picks with my promo code, you will get your first deposit matched up to $100. So uh, be sure to sign up, use that code, get your deposit bonus, take a look at all the player props that Prize Picks does have available uh, for these Thursday games. They even have some props up already for uh, Friday's games. You can take a look at all the all the props that are available. Um, again, on Prize Picks, it's very simple, very easy to use. You're just taking more or less on a player's projection. Um, you have to make at least two picks, but you can make up to six picks, and you can win up to 25x your money on Prize Picks. So again, guys, give them a try. Use that promo code NOAH. When you sign up, and you'll get your first deposit matched up to $100. Uh, but let's talk through this three-game slate for Thursday night. Let's start off with the first game of the night, the Sixers and the Nets. Uh, so we'll start off on the Brooklyn side. Um, you know, Last game, we did see Brooklyn run a really tight rotation in this game. You've got really big minutes for Mikael Bridges, really big minutes for Spencer Dinwiddie. Cam Johnson played really big minutes as well. And I think as long as Brooklyn can keep this game competitive, which has kind of been you know somewhat of an issue for them, but they were able to keep... Uh, game two competitive and you know, Bridges these guys are going to play a ton I mean Bridges played 41 minutes last game had 39 DK points wasn't the greatest game overall from a production standpoint but the minutes are just going to be through the roof for him um, again you just got to worry about Brooklyn keeping the game closed hopefully Brooklyn can actually put up you know more than 84 points last game that was literally the lowest amount of points they've scored in a game all season I actually looked it up so if, if Brooklyn can actually score more than 84 points here I mean there's definitely upside for a guy like Mikael Bridges who's going to play 40-plus minutes if it's competitive. Uh, same for Spencer Dinwiddie. Dinwiddie was not great last game, but he played 41 minutes at 7,100. I'm fine going to Dinwiddie today. I think both him and Bridges are playable. Between the two, I give a slight lean to Bridges, um, but I think it's really close between those two guys. And then Cam Johnson was the guy that had the really big game last game, put up 42 DK points. He was you know knocking down a ton of shots, 11 for 19 from the field, 5 for 11 from three. He didn't play as many minutes in game one of this series as he did in game two. But I feel like, you know, as long as he's knocking down shots, the minutes are going to be pretty secure for Cam Johnson. And again, Brooklyn ran like a really tight rotation. So if they continue to run, you know, like an eight-man rotation, basically like a, I think they ran like a seven-man rotation almost, um, there's going to be plenty of opportunity for Cam Johnson. If he's only 5,800. I think he's a very solid option in, you know, in the mid-range. Nick Claxton, though, was the guy that really lost a lot of minutes last game, only played 21 minutes, and we saw Brooklyn just kind of go small ball. They played a lot of Royce O'Neal at the five. They played a lot of Dorian Finney-Smith at the five. And if they're going to be willing to play small ball and you know go away from Claxton, Claxton is definitely a risky option. But the only reason that I think he's still in play is just because his price tag has come all the way down to 5,700. I mean, by some chance, if if Claxton gets back to like 30 minutes here or even you know 32, 33 minutes, he could easily pay off 5,700. So the fact that his price tag has come way down... I still think makes Claxton a viable option. He is definitely risky. It's not a guarantee that he plays big minutes, but he did play 30 minutes in game one. That was in a blowout. Last game, they went away from Claxton. Are they going to go away from Claxton again? I mean, we don't really know, but I think he's fine at 5,700 just because he is so cheap. And then Royce O'Neal, you know, been playing pretty good minutes off the bench, got up to 36 minutes last game. Royce O'Neal throughout his career has never been a great permanent producer, and even when he does play big minutes, he's not really guaranteed to have a good game. But it seems like they want to play him a good amount. He's been kind of one of their key pieces off the bench. We don't really have much value on these playoff slates, so I think Royce O'Neal as a value play is fine. Um, Dorian Finney-Smith going to probably play about 30 minutes. He played 27 last game. Another guy that, you know, again, is not a great permanent producer, but if you guarantee me 30 minutes from Dorian Finney-Smith at 4K, there's a good chance he could, you know, be good enough to pay off this price tag. Not saying he's going to go out there and put up, you know, 40 drafting points, but if he gives you, if he gives you 25 DK points at this price tag, you'll probably take that so those guys are in play for value I don't really see anything else on Brooklyn though that I'm interested in and then on the other side of this game with Philadelphia so you know Joel Embiid we saw bounce back last game put up 59 DK points scoring wasn't really there but he did get 19 rebounds had seven assists had you know some defensive stats as well 
we've seen Brooklyn, you know, double teaming and beat a lot. We haven't really seen him beat be really aggressive offensively just because he hasn't been able to because of how much you know, Brooklyn's kind of focusing their defense on him. Just 15 shot attempts in game one, just 11 shot attempts last game. You know, Embiid's one of these guys that could put up a huge game any night. Um, but on this slate, I don't think Embiid's a priority for me. Paying all the way up for him is not something that I'm really trying to do. And we don't really, again, we don't really have much value on these playoff slates. So if you do pay all the way up for Embiid, that's going to definitely limit the rest of your lineup. And you're probably going to be forced to play play guys like Royce O'Neal and play guys like Dorian Finney-Smith who, you know, aren't the sexiest options. So Embiid's fine, but not a priority for me. Harden at 8,900, I think is okay as well. Harden, you know, was pretty disappointing last game, but he's going to play huge minutes here. As long as he can, you know, knock down some shots, we know he's going to get the peripherals. We know he's going to get the assists. He can get some rebounds as well. He's fine to go to at 8,900. Between him or Embiid, I think I'd rather take the savings and play Harden if I had to choose between one of the two. But honestly, like, the Sixers are probably one of the least appealing teams on the slate. Maxi and Harris, where they're priced at, neither one of them looks super appealing. If I had to play one of those two guys, I think I'd rather go to Harris just because he's a little bit cheaper. I think both those guys project pretty similarly, and if you're going to give me a big discount, I'd just rather take the discounted guy. And there's really no value on Philadelphia, like Melton, Tucker, McDaniels, even if he plays. Like, none of these guys are really viable. So we can go ahead and move on to the next game, talk about Sacramento and Golden State. So in terms of a you know pace perspective and in terms of expected points, you know I think this is one of the game. This is definitely the game that's probably going to be the highest scoring of the three games tonight. Golden State we know likes to play at a fast pace, playing at home here. You expect them to put up a, you know plenty of points. I think it's a, a really good spot for these Golden State guys. The big injury news, or not even injury news, but the big news for Golden State is that there is going to be no Draymond Green today. Uh, Draymond is suspended for this game, so we'll have to wait and see what Golden State does with the starting lineup. I think there's a few guys that could start here. I think they could start Jordan Poole, but I think that's kind of unlikely, you know, especially because yeah, I think they like bringing Poole off the bench, playing him with the second unit. They could start um, Gary Payton. They could start Dante DiVincenzo. They could start Jonathan Kaminga. My guess is it's either going to be DiVincenzo or Kaminga that starts in place of uh, in place of Draymond. I lean DiVincenzo as the guy that starts here, um, just because I, I think with how they you know run their just the, the, given the lineup in general, they could play Clay, or they could play, you know, the two guards, Steph and Clay, play DiVincenzo at the three, you know, move Wiggins down to the four, and then obviously play Looney at the five. So I think it'll be DiVincenzo that starts. I don't think it's a guarantee. Either way, you know, DiVincenzo, Kaminga, whoever starts is probably going to project out as a pretty good value play. DiVincenzo, when he's playing with Steph and with Clay, you know, he's not the best permanent producer, but he is really cheap. We don't really have much value on the slate. If he winds up starting, he's going to be a pretty solid value. And then Jonathan Kaminga, 4,200, if he winds up starting, he's going to be a pretty solid value as well. The only reason I'm a little bit hesitant on Kaminga is just because he hasn't really been a key part of the rotation. Last game played just four minutes. The game before that played just 10 minutes, whereas DiVincenzo has actually got decent minutes, you know, 20 minutes in game one, 13 minutes last game. That's why I think DiVincenzo starts over Kaminga, but we'll have to see. Again, whoever starts in place of Draymond, I think is going to be in play for value. Um, but let's talk about the other Warriors. We'll start off at the top with Steph at 9,700. Look, Steph, in the first two games of this series, he's not been that great. I mean, from a scoring perspective, I mean, he scored 30 points and 28 points, but for fantasy, he really hasn't you know, been justifying this price tag. Man, I feel like at some point, maybe this is the game where Steph finally pops off and puts up like 60 drafting points. I think he's firmly in play for GBPs. I don't think he's a priority for me. I don't think I'm forcing Steph into my lineups, but you know, any lineups that I would have Steph in, I think you know, I would be fine with. Now, for me, I just play one lineup in NBA DFS, so... Will Steph make my one lineup? Uh, you know, I don't know yet. I haven't really built my lineup, but um, I don't think Steph's a priority. Firmly in play, though, if you do want to go there. And then Clay Thompson at 7,200 is a solid mid-range play. You know, I think not having Draymond Green might not be. It's probably a downgrade for Clay because Draymond, you know, is so good at getting Clay open looks with how he can set screens, with how he can dish the ball. Um, but Clay's going to play huge minutes here as long as he can, you know, get hot from the field. He's got a ton of upside. The pace of this game is obviously good for Clay. Um, you know, Clay usually thrives in fast-paced games. At 7,200, Clay is a fine option. Uh, Andrew Wiggins, though, I think looks like a pretty good play in the mid-range. Probably my favorite play, uh, you know, from a points per dollar perspective. Last two games, you know, obviously game one of this series, he, you know, limited off the bench at 28 minutes. Last game moved back into the starting lineup, and Wiggins played 39 minutes. So clearly, after playing 39 minutes last game, Wiggins it seems to be fully healthy. He's coming into this game questionable with right shoulder soreness, but. I don't think this is an injury that's actually going to keep him out. Like, I expect Wiggins to play today. And Wiggins is going to have to play a ton here, especially without Draymond. So, 6,300, I definitely think is too cheap for Wiggins now that he seems to be, you know, back to full strength, playing full minutes. 
And then Jordan Poole, you know, maybe he gets a little bit of a boost here without Draymond. Maybe he starts in place of Draymond. I doubt it. Poole has not been that good in this series. His minutes were way down last game. He is definitely a risky option. Um, I think he's more of a GBP dart throw. I expect his ownership to be very low. But maybe he's the guy that picks up more minutes without Draymond. We don't really know how Steve Kerr is going to run his rotation. I would consider Poole, though, just kind of a risky GBP play. Uh, Kevon Looney, though, do like quite a bit at 5,500. His minutes should be pretty secure here without Draymond. As long as he can avoid foul trouble, which has kind of been an issue for him. He's had five fouls in both games in this series. But I think as long, uh, as, long as he avoids foul trouble, Looney probably does play like 30 to 32 minutes. And Looney is a you know, pretty solid per minute producer. So uh, he looks really good at 5,500. And then we talked about the value guys. Um, you know, we'll have to wait and see who winds up starting for Draymond. I think Gary Payton coming off the bench is a pretty good value play regardless. His minutes have been pretty good in this series. 20 minutes in game one, 27 minutes last game. Uh, Payton's just been playing way better than Jordan Poole has. He's he's a better defender too. And I think they kind of are you know trying to get some good defenders out there to help slow down De'Aaron Fox. So I think Payton's going to play pretty good minutes regardless. Maybe he starts here. We don't really know, but at 4,400, um, he's someone that I do like quite a bit, even if he comes off the bench again. Um, obviously, if he starts, he would you know project even better. But that'll do it for the Golden State side. Let's go ahead and talk about Sacramento now. And for the Kings today, you know, once again, I think De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis both look really solid here. Between the two, I do prefer Sabonis. Sabonis at 9K just is way too cheap, in my opinion. I know Sabonis was a disappointment last slate, only had 39 DK points. And so far in the first two games of this series, Sabonis has not been that great, just 40 and 39 DK points. But the minutes have been great, as we would expect. Got 40 minutes last game. I think not having Draymond out there definitely is going to make this a little bit of a better matchup for Sabonis. And again, we just never really see Sabonis this cheap. I know he's not really been justifying this price tag, but usually we see Sabonis priced at like 10K, 10,100, 10,200. 9K, I think, is too cheap for Zabonis. So, really like Zabonis here. I think he's a really strong payup option. I think De'Aaron Fox at 9,100 is a solid play as well. He's been great in this series, been super aggressive offensively, taking a ton of shots. Don't really expect anything to change. Um, the price tag's starting to come up on, on Fox, but I still think at 9,100, um, he's a viable option too. And then the rest of the Kings, this is where, you know, it gets not as interesting, but I still think there's some guys you can consider you know, as viable plays. Malik Monk's been coming off the bench, but his minutes have been really good. 29 minutes in game one, 31 minutes last game. He's been getting a lot of minutes over Keegan Murray, and it just seems like right now they don't really want to play Keegan Murray that much. So I do expect Monk to continue to get about 25 to 30 minutes. The price tag is up to 5,600 now. So at 5,600, I wouldn't consider Monk like a slam dunk play, but I still think he is viable. And then Kevin Herter and Harrison Barnes, I think, are very similar plays. They're both going to get like 30, 35 minutes. They're not the greatest per minute producers, but the minutes are going to be there, and the price tags are not that high. So at 5,400, I think Herter is a solid option. He feels like a you know, like a cash game play, very you know solid floor. The ceiling on Herter is probably not super high, but for his price tag, he's pretty likely to give you a decent you know return on that salary. Same could be said for Harrison Barnes. I mean, he's been just consistent in this series. 36 minutes in game one, 34 minutes last game, 31, 28 DraftKings points. Not a guy that's going to go out there and win you the slate, but if you need someone to give you, you know, 30 DK points, that, that's probably what Harrison Barnes is going to do. And I think at 5,100, getting 30 DK points at that price tag is probably going to be good enough um, because just a lot of the guys in that 5K range, you know, aren't going to project super well. So Barnes, Herter, both solid plays. Nothing else from Sacramento, though, I'm super interested in. Um, I know Donovan, or uh, not Donovan Mitchell, Davion Mitchell had a good game off the bench last game. Don't know if that's something that I really want to chase, but I think they do like Davion Mitchell in this series just because he can defend pretty well, and they kind of, you know, they need some good defensive guards out there to guard Clay and to guard Steph. So Davion probably still plays good minutes, even, you know, obviously even playing with De'Aaron Fox, the minutes I think will still be solid. But we've seen Davion Mitchell just not really be that good of a permanent producer. I would definitely be fine to fade him here. Um, not a guy that I think is that appealing for a value play. So let's just go ahead and move on to the last game of the night, the Suns and the Clippers. And we'll start off on the Clippers side. So obviously, you know, for the Clippers right now, no Paul George. We can once again expect, you know, massive usage, massive role for Kawhi Leonard. So far in the series, Kawhi has been amazing. 55 DK points in game one. 57 DK points last game, 42 minutes in game one, 40 or 39 minutes last game. He's going to play 40, 42 minutes as long as this game is competitive. Kawhi's been doing everything from scoring, rebounding, getting assists. He's just been stuffing the stat sheet. He's a very strong payoff option here. I would definitely put him up there with, you know, like Sabonis in terms of best spins on the slate. We're going to talk about, you know, Kevin Durant later, Devin Booker as well. You know, those guys are interesting, but I definitely think, you know, Kawhi Leonard's really solid here. 
And then Russell Westbrook's been pretty good in this series from a fantasy perspective. 44 DK points in game one, 45 DK points in game two. The minutes have been there for Westbrook, and that's, I guess, the one positive to take away. We have seen, and we did definitely see you know, a lot during the regular season when Westbrook jo joined the Clippers. He wasn't playing like huge minutes every night. There would definitely be nights where he just wouldn't close. They, they play Bones Highland over Westbrook. Given that he's played 36 minutes in both games of the series, I assume we're just going to get 36 minutes again, you know, 34, 35, 36 minutes. We know that Westbrook is a guy that can do everything when he's on the floor from scoring, rebounding, assisting, um, even defensive stats. Westbrook's been getting defensive stats lately. So at 8K, I don't think Westbrook's like a, a priority at this 8K price tag, but I still think he's a pretty strong option, especially if he continues to get, you know, 36 minutes a night. Um, him, and, him and Kawhi, I think, are both, you know, pretty solid. I do prefer Kawhi, though, if I could get it up to him. And then the rest of the Clippers... The one guy that I do still like is Avika Zubak. I played Zubak in my main lineup last late. He did not have the greatest game, but he played 29 minutes, and that's one of that's a positive to take away is that so far in this series, the minutes have been pretty good for Zubak. 30 minutes in game one, 29 minutes last game. Any night that I'm guaranteed to get 30 minutes from Zubak, I would probably take that at 5,300. I mean, normally when Zubak plays 30 minutes, he's going to outperform a $5,300 salary. So I think Zubak is a little bit too cheap here. I think he does look like a pretty good center option and definitely one of the better, I guess, you know, value plays on the slate. Do like Zubak quite a bit. The rest of the Clippers, um, the only other guy that I think, you know, does look kind of appealing for value is Eric Gordon. He's just been playing good minutes and his minutes should continue to be solid without um, Paul George. I, I would consider Eric Gordon a very similar play to, you know, Harrison Barnes and, and Kevin Herter. Like, the ceiling on Eric Gordon is pretty l small. Like it's He's not going to go out there and put up 40 drafting points, but he can knock down some threes. He's going to play probably 30 to 32 minutes. Value is always very thin to find on these playoff slates. So if we're getting 30, 32 minutes from Eric Gordon at 4,600, he's a viable value option, I think is you know, firmly in play. Shooting guard and small forward eligible on DraftKings, so it's you know, pretty easy to roster him. You can roster him in a lot of different spots. Um, so I do like Eric Gordon for value. I think that's it, though, for the, uh, for the Clippers. So... Let's talk about the other side of this game now with the Suns and looking at Phoenix here. You know, they're another team running a really tight rotation right now, playing their guys big minutes. And we've seen, you know, lately Kevin Durant, Devin Booker both playing 40 plus minutes a night. You know, last game, 44 minutes for Kevin Durant, 45 minutes in game one. I mean, the dude's just playing huge minutes right now. And I know last game that didn't really result in a good fantasy performance. But if we're getting 44, 45 minutes from Kevin Durant, I mean, this is a guy that can easily pay off 9,600 when he's playing 45 minutes a night. I mean, we know Kevin Durant throughout his career has always been a great permanent producer. His usage with Phoenix has not been like as high um, just because he is sharing the ball with Devin Booker and Chris Paul and DeAndre Ayton, but still KD at 9,600, I think it's a strong payup option. Between him or Kawhi, I give a slight lean to Kawhi, but I think it is really close. Um, and then Devin Booker had a big game last game, played huge minutes as well. At 8,800, I think Booker's a fine option. Um, I do prefer Kawhi. I do prefer KD. And I think I prefer Sabonis as well over Booker. But again, Booker is a guy that, you know, is just going to play a ton. And it's really, it's hard for him to disappoint at this salary. Like, even if Booker has a bad game, he's probably still giving you, like, 40 drafting points because it, it's going to be hard for him to just completely fail unless this turns into a blowout or something or he gets hurt because he's playing, he's playing 44, 45 minutes if the game's close. We've kind of seen that they don't really care. They'll just run Booker into the ground. Um, so yeah, I think Booker 8,800 is still a fine option. And then Chris Paul and DeAndre Ayton both, you know, are not as appealing. Paul's minutes obviously haven't been as high as Durant and, and Booker, just because I don't think Paul can handle playing that many minutes, but man, he's still got 39 and 38 minutes in the two games in this series. His permanent production's been okay. 41 DK points in game one, 36 DK points last game. The price tag is 7,400. It's still reasonable for Chris Paul. Um, so I think Chris Paul is an okay play. DeAndre Ayton, we did see a little bit of a better game from him last game. Wasn't much, but he did have a double-double. Um, did pick up five fouls, so he, I think he did get a little bit limited by foul trouble. And it looked like they were going to play Ayton pretty big minutes last game if he didn't get in foul trouble. So I definitely think if he avoids fouls here, we're going to get like 36, 37, 38 minutes from Ayton. Obviously, Ayton, ever since Kevin Durant has arrived, Ayton just has not been the same player. His permanent production has gone way down. He's still playable, but not a guy that I'm like loving. He's definitely the, my least favorite of all the Suns, but I do expect more than 32 minutes here. I know the first two games in the series, he's played 33 and 32. I feel like tonight, this is a game he gets like 36, 37, because he, I think he has been in foul trouble in both these two games, if I, if I do remember correctly. Um, but then talking about the other Suns, the only other guy that I'll mention as a value play 
is Torrey Craig. We've seen Torrey Craig start both games in the series, and he's been really good. I mean, he's been knocking down threes. Um, Torrey Craig has never been like the greatest per minute producer, but if he's going to get 30 to 32 minutes at just 4,700, very similar to Eric Gordon. Not a guy that's going to go out there and break the slate and win you the slate, but he'll probably give you 24, 25 DK points, which at his salary you, you, you might take. I mean, there's not going to be a ton of guys this cheap that have like great games that really outperform their salary. So if you're looking for value, I think Torrey Craig, once again, is fine to go to. Um, so yeah, that's probably it for the Suns. I don't really see anything else here. Again, Phoenix, they're just running such a tight rotation right now that really like nobody else is even playing that much. I mean, Josh Okogie barely played. He got what, like 15, 15 minutes last game. Landry Shamet, I think, got the most minutes off the bench or he played 14. These guys just really aren't playing that much. They're going to run, you know, Booker 40 plus, Durant 40 plus, Paul high 30s, Booker or Aiton high 30s. Like those guys are just going to get a lot of the minutes. So that's really it for Phoenix, guys. That's it for this three game uh, slate for Thursday night. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, appreciate you watching. Make sure you hit that like button. If you guys enjoyed, hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And be sure to go check out Prize Picks. Uh, sponsor the video. You guys can sign up for Prize Picks and use my promo code, promo code NOAH. When you sign up, you will get your first deposit matched up to $100. When you do sign up with my promo code, be sure to check them out, guys. Um, take a look at all the player props that, you know, Price Picks does have available for these NBA games. But good luck on this slate. Appreciate you guys watching the video, as always, and supporting the content. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.